Hello, this is Jorge Pedret. And we are here for a um, space of exploring emotional intelligence for man. And this is intended, this was intended to be a, a group meeting, a team, team meeting. And the feedback that I'm getting from the universe is that is this that I got to go first. I gotta go um, in a way by myself first and get to see what this is actually like, what is this actually about? So I would like to start with, th this is gonna be an exploration of emotional, the emotional body. And I'm gonna do it in an exploration of my emotional body in a way that it creates possibilities for yourself that is watching this video as a man and it creates uh yeah other like possibilities for for others other than me so i'll be going to my own navigation and sharing the navigation in a way that it creates possibility for for you that is watching right and this is a a skill that that you that you can practice uh in your own inner navigation and this is inherently the value of being able to navigate your feelings and navigate uh, the different sources and, and information that comes from different places from here and there. So I would like to start with the, going into first position is the very first thing. This is the, the bottom line for accessing your feelings and for accessing like other for being embodied into your in your body that you can have access to your feelings so the first position it consists of the basic parts of three steps if you have been seeing some of my work and some of the videos that i have posted before i have shared videos about this and also if you have been in in meetings with me where i've held this space i've also go to this first three steps and it even starts with you take a deep breath, taking a deep breath, inhaling the, the prana, the, the air that is there available. And if you are finding yourself short of breath or in a rush or going too fast or not finding your speed, take a deep breath and let it all the way down into your being. Let it all the way, the air go all the way into your being. After that, you're gonna start noticing with your attention where your attention is. Notice if your attention is somewhere in the future, if it's somewhere in the past, if it is uh, in, in, another, in another time and space. And I got, I got somebody that just joining here and I'm gonna let them in because we're just getting started and I'll just let them in right in hot. So here we go, this is John Paul Summit and I'll let him in. Hello, John, still connecting to audio. <clears throat> Got a brave soul here joining this space. Hello, John Paul. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Right on. So I started the recording uh, a few minutes ago, and I'm just uh, come come here with me. Uh, I'm gonna be navigating us to a first position space. So I just started with that work exploring in this space the emotional body and emotional intelligence for man and and i'm just getting us to this place that is called the first position is there is there any logistics that you have right now out of the get-go and will you be able to turn your camera on so i can see you i can't i'm i'm in public okay 
Okay, so just to let you know that the meetings uh, was starting 10 minutes ago. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so I was waiting for a bit of time and then I just started recording. So I thought I'll be here by myself sharing this. And uh, I'll just keep going with this process that it, it's, it's the process of starting to get into, be able to feel, feel your feelings. And this is uh, the process of first position. And I'll just share a little bit more about it. If you are in a, in a place of martial arts uh, or in a dance, in a dance place, in a, in a dance practice like uh, flamenco or ballet, they always have a, a first position. Uh, for example, in, in Aikido, uh, the first position is a, a foot positioning in an L position, and then your body goes like this, like full on attention, like all of your hips facing the front, and like facing the the yeah what what is in front of you this space here is your space uh, of of biggest power of biggest wow. access to power will you be able to, to mute your your microphone for a moment sure like there is some some sound oh, i can do it from here all right i got it yeah, and if you if you have to say anything, just unmute yourself and and say it. Uh, this is a, an interactive space, and and I'll just get us started through this process and then open up the space for for questions and intentions. So as I was saying, to access your emotions, your heart center, as a man is a very challenging thing and we tend to be a lot here in the head. It's so easy to be, put our center up here in the head. And this process of first position is so that you can bring your, your energetic center from your head, from having it in your thoughts, in ideas, into the deeper parts of your body. And it's actually located like right here under the belly button. You drive your attention there. So this first position is uh, three steps. Uh, the first step is centering. So you're gonna notice, and uh, you can do this uh, with me, Paula. I feel sad. Uh, I feel sad that you, I can't see you, and that I can't hear you. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. So. <laughs> Use your intention to notice where your attention is. You start noticing where are you putting your attention? Is it somewhere in the past, somewhere in the future? Is it uh, with somebody, a family member, or your children, or your partner, or is it at work? And you gently start noticing where your attention is and without needing to change anything or, or move, notice it. And slowly and gently start using your intention for gathering your attention in a small here and now. So in this meeting, in this space, with these people, in this container, and you start bringing your attention from wherever it's at, where is it in the future, in the past, you start using your hands even, you can use it to here, to a small ball here and now in front of you. You can gather it from wherever it's at, wherever projects, people, use your hands and, and bring it into a ball that's here. So for all of your attention will be as much as you can of it in, into this ball. Then once you have that ball, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a process that you can do over and over. And the more you do it, the more you can get your attention to focus in the, in the here and now in a very small here and now, three seconds. So you get it here, you get it here. Use your intention again to move it gently uh, from, from where it is to your the center of your body. So you're moving your attention, all of your attention, all of your attention into the center of your body. And this is gonna create some sensations. This is gonna come with, with feelings, this movement. 
of moving your attention to the center of your body, three, three fingers under the belly button, in between your hips, that is your physical center. So what you're doing is moving your energetic center, which is a mobile and, and is dispersed and it can move to the future and the past. You're gathering it in, in front of you, your energetic center, your energy, the center of your energy and make it into a mask. And you're placing that mask in your physical body, in the center of your physical body. So if you if you put yourself in a in a balance in a in a stick when you're balancing like that with with the yoga, this is the the center of balance right under your belly button. So <clears throat> this is a sensation. This is a sensation of being centered. And the more you practice this, the more you can gather your attention and your energy from wherever it's at to the present moment, so that you can. Uh, really inhabit your your body with all of your energy and all of your intention. Once you are centered, this is the first step. You are centered. This is a sensation. It's not a concept. It's not an idea, and it's not a theory. It's really a sensation that you feel in your body of being centered. Once you center, once you're centered, we're going to the next step, which is grounding. So you click. You snap your fingers like that, you create that vibration of sound, and you declare that from your center to the center of the of the planet, to the center of Mother Earth, to the center of Gaia, there is a grounding core. A grounding core that goes from your center to the center of Gaia. And you are like this connected to the planet. This is grounding. You are grounded. So you are center and grounded. And this, this core is about that deep generally and it's a flexible core so it's move it's movable color so at the count of three please share the, the name of the color of your grounding core so you, you click your fingers and you you and at the count of three please tell me the color of your grounding core so one two Three, my color is light, light blue. What color is your grounding core, John? John Paul. Blue. 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 Yeah. What kind of blue? What, what color? Like Pink. dark. Dark blue. Dark blue. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this is your grounding core and, and it's a two-way communication. So you receive energy and information from Gaia, which is the, the, the place where we're standing right now. Both of us are standing on it right now. And you can test this. I'm going to stand up again to test it. Because you can test this by standing up. And if you try jumping like that, you, you don't just keep floating up in the air. You don't just keep like floating like that, like a, a bird. There is a grounding core. There is an attraction, and that attraction is a, your your connection to to the earth. This is the second step of the first position. So that's a, one way that you can test it. Just stand up and jump and feel that attraction, feel that that pull, that connection to Gaia. You can ask her questions through this core. You can really test it out. Sometimes even, uh, there is this thing that I do and we can do it right now. Is that you're gonna grab your hand like that and you're gonna pluck, pluck your, you know, reach out in between your legs or if you're sitting in between your legs and you're gonna pluck the, the grounding cord like if it's a guitar string. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So, yeah, just go ahead and, and block it like that and like feel it the, feel the vibration of it <clears throat> like that. And sometimes when we do that, it changes the color of the grounding core. Sometimes things fall out of it. Um, blocking that, that connection. So this is just a, a tool that you can do in your daily daily practice. So 
be center. You brought your attention to your center. Your grounding core is from your center to the center of Gaia. You're grounded. So the next step, you click again your fingers. And you're going to declare your bubble of space. And this is a, a very, very, this is a challenging step for, for, some, for some people because it, we tend to, to really be, uh, not, not have a strong bubble of space. The, we tend to have a, a very flimsy and, and, and a space that it doesn't have a distinction between me and, and the others. It's to, to have that. Uh, holes in the in the bubble of space and and ways that we are like entities that are sucking energy from us and people that, are, that we have like a strong connection with and and then there is like a, like a lot of exchange so for example for men we have a lot of this work to do with our with our mother uh, because we we are essentially enmeshed in our in our mother's bubble as a, as a growing up initiation and in the process of growing up, one of those processes that is uh, painful and like very sobering and enlivening is this unenmeshment of our mother's bubble and then our parents' bubble and our bubble. So you can have like really a clarity of what is, what is your feelings and your thoughts and your uh, identity uh, in, and what is the, the rest of the world? What is the rest of the world and what is mine? And this is uh, one of the most useful uh, and necessary adulthood initiations that, that it, it takes a certain processes that it doesn't happen from a, a day in the morning. It doesn't happen just from realizing that it's there. So this is your bubble of space. You, this is the third step. You declare your bubble of space from being center, being grounded, and having your bubble of space. And this is really the, the basic of the first position. From your bubble of space, you can hold space from and see what is on the other side and what is me uh, with a lot more clarity. And yeah, in this bubble of space, it has characteristics you can scan it with your hands like that and see that it has certain characteristics and it, you can tell how thick it is you can tell where there is holes you can tell where there is uh, loops that are sucking energy out of your bubble of space and for for me there was a, a big process about a year ago where i had a hole right in front of my bubble like that and and I will not feel safe at all. There was always a, a mask pretending. And I had to do, uh, after doing a few processes about it, there was like two or three layers of processing about it. And I was able to repair that, to, to bring that so that I could gain a authenticity of my face, my expressions, my, my, yeah, the, my pretending, my, this mask of pretending. So those are the basic three steps. From here, you're grounded. I mean, you're centered, you're grounded, and you're bubbled. And I'm gonna make a drawing of it here because this is first position. This is really the, if, if you're practicing uh, connecting with your emotions or connecting with your feelings or growing up as a man to hold space uh, for, for women or for culture, for holding space, for creating the things that you want to create, this is the, the first position. This is the, the first step, like the, the practice that will change your life. If you practice this 10 times a day or something like that, you put a reminder every, every hour in your phone that you, will, that you will go into first position and you will move from first position, your life will start changing. It will be a life-changing practice. And, and it's awesome because... You can do it anywhere. You can do this anywhere. Uh, and it, it, uh, it doesn't have to be this whole explanation. You can just do, do the process yourself um, of uh, getting centered. So this is the person. 
Right, so you go center, you get grounded to the planet, the grounding core, and your bubble of space. Yeah. So it's all those three steps for first position. Uh, and this is the this is the basic the basic set of first position. There is other steps after that that go a little further into uh, how to inhabit more of your body and the different parts of you and your your sword of clarity and uh, the different resources that are uh, available for you uh, as a as a human being. <clears throat> so now that we are here in first position. I want to open up the space for hearing from you. I want to hear your, yeah, your necessity of being in this space. What brings you here? Um, hello. And yeah, if you can share like your name and where, where you're calling from mm -hmm. and any questions that you have or what necessity that you have from being here. Uh, uh. I just need some spiritual advice. Are you still there, uh, John Paul? Wow. He's either very shy or he got freaked out. <clears throat> it's okay. Holding space here from first position. Somebody, uh, I was just holding space uh, for going into this first position. And the person that I was holding space for uh, fell out of the call. And I feel scared because there is this uh, dropping. Oh, it's like one of my tripulation, one of my crew members just, just died or he disappeared. And now I'm, I'm uh, in the in middle space, like wondering, okay, what? What's next? What is the next thing? And I feel sad because this work, it, it takes, for me, is, I'm in this, in this journey of holding space, of what it is like to hold space. And knowing that I'm here by myself, but that I'm recording this and that this could be creating possibilities for other people that are watching and creating uh, something, uh, a learning, a pathway for others to see th this journey, this process. So I, I go one, one step at a time in this and putting on the table what the emotions that are, are there uh, in a way that that these pathways they can be navigated into spaces that open up uh, something else there and there is other this this many other spaces that my box will be comfortable with um with going into like giving up like okay like that's it like that was the third goal and i i can't go anymore this this is fucked up nobody's gonna find value in this uh i'm not good enough or i freaked out that person and then just quit stop it uh and don't publish it that's one one way that my box will be 
it, it would have been comfortable with a few a few months ago or a few uh, like a few years ago. There is the 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 other step, which will be like the other possibility that could be uh, complaining or blaming. I will blame man, or I will blame myself, or I will blame others for what what is happening. Essentially, I will say I'm not good enough. I didn't hold space. I I was too too much. Essentially, something in this regard, and and that will be it. The, the next process, the next door, we will be complaining, complaining or blaming, blaming myself or blaming the other. That's one doorway and it's right there. And it's so, uh, so big and easy to, to go into. And, and still like now we can see that doorway and it's like something else, something else is possible. Something else really is possible. So, okay, going back in here to first position, we're in the spaceship, navigating, connecting the fear, connecting with the, all of these thoughts and, and emotions that, that come. And I am remembering a friend shared with me a, a few months ago when, when something like this happened, that if you don't feel scared about something, you're really a psychopath. You're really somebody that, that that doesn't feel scared of failing or fear of being alive. And, and that really touched me. That really, uh, uh, like, that really uh, created this space for me to, to go a bit deeper into this value of feeling, feeling scared. That if I'm feeling scared, it's because I care about something. I care about this and I care about Trans transmitting something or creating a possibility or opening doorways or expanding my capacity of holding space. I feel scared that I, I have an intention of doing something and I'm creating something else. And if this is happening for you, then there is, there is two, two ways. You can hide away from it. You can say, I'm not going to act and I'm not going to do anything because I'm scared uh, that I'm going to hurt somebody or that I'm scared that I'm going to do it wrong. And so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay here uh, passively or inactive in a way. I'm not going to even go there because I might hurt somebody. I might push uh, something and mess it up. I might make a mess. And there is the other pathway, which takes a jump. It takes a leap. It takes a, a yeah. It takes this this will of going into the unknown, without knowing exactly how it's gonna go, and knowing that you care about it, knowing that it's something that you want to learn, knowing that it's somewhere where you want to go but you don't know exactly how it's going to go. And th that is that, that second doorway that it, it is necessary for you as a man to go into to discover what it is to hold space. Because nobody, we don't come here knowing how to hold space. And in a way, we have our own way of holding space. And... If you want to improve your way of holding space, you, if you want to expand your capacity of holding space, it, it, it takes that challenge of going to the, the next edge and going beyond the edge and going beyond the edge and going beyond the edge and crashing and, and falling and burning, crashing and burning and discovering something new from that discovery discovering this new territory that you that you opened up with this exploration and that in that exploration you are creating something something new something that hasn't been discovered something that is not this uh, staying safe in this place safe or making fun or making it making it uh, normalize it or 
dismiss it or push it down is going with with all of your being like you are a space holder and going with that going with as a space holder you are a space holder for what you care about and how are you holding space for what you care about how are you holding space for these things that you want to create in the world and yes these are scary conversations and these are territories that exist inside of you that if you don't explore it uh, with others in a way it stays just in your bubble in your being and it, it doesn't have this chance to be seen it doesn't have this chance to evolve because it doesn't come out of the shell it stays inside so this process of coming outside of the shell and trying and giving it a go and getting feedback from the universe and this feedback being painful because it's you're not creating you are not what you thought you were you in your mind you had a an, an imagination or an idea of who you thought you were and who what you thought you were holding space for and once you come outside into trying, into giving it a go, into coming out of the shell, you are faced with the reality of what that is like. And often it is very different than what you thought that it was. And this is painful. This is very painful and scary and alive. And it, it, it gives this sensation of wanting to crawl back right into into the into the shell uh, and in a way uh, a lot of us do that we could crawl back back inside into the the safe spot and and that that is the that is the process of, of expanding and learning and there will be this point that you reach when you uh come out you cr you come out you crash and burn like you get faced with the this feedback from the universe that the the image that you have is different than uh, than the reality and you're able to to stand in it and to say and to shift you're able to take this feedback directly and say i'm receiving this feedback from the universe and what is it telling me and then you can stand stand in that place instead of crawling back into your place of comfort into your marshmallow zone you you come out and you are able to to shift to go out and to say okay i want to become a better space holder then you come out you get this feedback something is not working and then you can shift what is not working uh there is the what is not working what is it not working And stay in the, the pain of that question because that question is alive and it, it, you're going to see it over and over and over and over. You're going to keep seeing it coming up in every, in every step that you come into. You're going to see it coming up and there's going to be emotions about it. There's going to be feelings about it that are very real. And that if, if you don't have the matrix, the inner structure to stand in those feelings, your, the impulse will be to crawl back or to avoid, or to say, oh, I, I don't actually care so much right now about space holding. I care more about a, a bacon hamburger uh, with a soda Coca-Cola. And then you create these distractions or like, oh, I'm going to check what the, the Facebook wall is saying. And, <clears throat> and, and we have like all of these mechanisms to to avoid being in the pain of that question of what is not working? What is it that is not working? That is a super, super powerful question. So one of, one of the matrix building experiments that you can do uh, for being able to stand more in this space of discomfort of how to hold space uh, for what are you holding space for 
And in this case, I'm holding space for emotional intelligence for man. I'm holding space for the healing, the growth and the evolution of man uh, so that man can grow up into their adulthood so that they can be in their adult feelings without having to run away from them uh, so that they can uh, really experience the ecstasy of feeling what adult feelings are like. And, and just to, to expand a little bit more on that, when we, when for a man and actually for man and woman, when we come into this world, we, we, we go through such a big shock of facing the, the reality of this world, like the from being being born in a hospital, being born under these like like flashlights and uh, like really strong lights in, in a hospital. I was born C-section, and a lot of people down in South America, around ninety percent, are born through C-section, and this is a tra traumatizing process for for us, and. <clears throat> and 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 in this process the, it, yeah we we start getting the, the the feedback from from the world that is that is loud and and it's not really what we expected and that it, we got to in a way protect protect yourself you got to find a way to protect yourself and, and, and in, in this process, we lose so much, so much access to, to our feelings, to our capacity to feel. And, uh, and as men, our, our emotional body essentially stops growing. The emotional body is, stops growing. It, is, it has its growing, its growing step, steps, steps, you have your emotional body where you have experiencing your emotions, you experience your, your sadness when you first come out of your of the womb. You experience this like uh, great, like big, like big feeling. And this is like the, the emotional body starts growing. The emotional body continues to grow. And, and all of these different traumas and, and feedback that we get from the world, for example, our parents telling us that our feelings are too much that our school telling us that, that it's not okay to feel. Uh, and then all of this stunts the, the emotional body from continuing to grow. So uh, I didn't know this until I started doing my own work of, of, uh, of rage, of with my anger. I didn't know that my anger was creating resentment in my life and it was creating disconnection. And it was creating all sorts of havoc that I wasn't aware of until I started doing my work with anger. I started seeing the both what I was creating with the current level of anger that I had and what I was missing out on from not using the, the full potential of my anger as an adult. So yeah, one of these, one of the things that I'm taking a stand for and that I'm holding space for is for the evolution, the growth of the emotional body of, of men so that they can hold space for other possibilities. If you are as a man, if you have the, the, the emotional body of a, of a 13 year old, like it was for me, I had an emotional body of 13, 12 year old then all you can hold space is for, for those emotions that you had around that time, which were uh, your connection with, with your mother, your connection with your father. Uh, so it, it was from this space of uh, needing uh, and this space of needing. So in a way, if you don't evolve your emotional body, you're gonna continue, you're emotionally, you're gonna continually be in treating uh, women as, and your partner as uh, as your mother. And I wanna create, I'm holding space for creating something that is something else, where man can have their own emotions and be aware of their own emotions without having to consume a woman as, as their mother, where they can really hold, hold space for women without having to take from them. And, 
and for this it is necessary to go through all, all of this uh, evolution of your emotions essentially reclaiming access to your anger or which is your clarity and i'm gonna make a map here of the map of feelings so that it lands uh, visually right so this is going to be the map of feelings so we're on. Right, so it splits in, in four. Then on, on one quadrant, you have anger. On the other quadrant, you have sadness. Uh, on this other quadrant, you have fear. And in the solid pattern, you have joy. And ideally, I like to do this color coded, but right now it's just black. So essentially, if you are, yeah, the, the, if you're coming from modern culture, from the, the culture that, that where we were raised, I just want to make sure that the microphone is working. It is working. Okay. So if you're coming from the modern, from the culture where, where I was raised and most of us were raised, they tell us that three, three of these are negative feelings and only one of them is positive. And and that, yeah, anger is something that we should avoid. Anger is like, is bad. Anger is, it gets you in trouble. Anger is violent. Anger is aggressive. You probably heard this from me before, but this is the basic of your emotional body. This is the, the basic of how your emotional body functions. And it's not a, it's not like there is an X like that in your emotional body. And, and that's exactly how it is. It's use reference points. You can notice this as a strong reference points that when you go to these reference points in a in a in a in a practical way in a specific way when you go into a, like in a way an isolated way you can get to sense that reference point in your body in a isolation from the other ones so you get to see what what your anger is in um uh, without having it mixed with the other feelings, with the with joy, fear, or sadness, so you get to feel exactly what that feels like inside of you and what that is for. <clears throat> and and it is in in go, in exploring each one of these quadrants of your life, you get to in a way expand your your body, emotional body continues to grow, and it starts developing more. You're able to feel more of your anger in a conscious way and and this opens up your your space for feeling more of the other feelings of the other emotions so in a way once you expand this once this like you experience this expansion then you're able to hold a, a hold space for your anger when you're feeling angry or when you see that something is crossing your boundary and you need your anger to say hey stop hey that's not what i want no no, this is not what I signed up for. Please back off. This is my space. No. When you feel the, the anger rising up to, to put that boundary there, then you're able to hold space for that for yourself instead of having your boundary crossed over, going uh, hunched, hunched over and get, get all upset, get angry. And... And, and in the same way, it grows like that for the other feelings, for, for your sadness too. This is my, my current research and my current experiment that I'm into of a holding space for my anger, which is my, my clarity and my, my boundary, my yes and no, and holding space for my softness, for the, the softness of, of my being, my love, my connection, this lover that is in, inside of me that... That, that cares about this, that is not just about cutting and about saying no and about pushing away, but 
that cares about it, that uh, that I care. And, and this is my current experiment of holding space for those two things at the same time, which before in the past, it would have been impossible. I would have been, I, I, I was completely lost about this. And, and what I'm finding in my research is that as I'm holding space for these two and I'm consciously going into it, I notice my fear comes in, my fear of, uh, of, of the, the clarity, the amount of, of, of things, the things that I care about, the fear of, of losing connection with one of these. What I was experiencing before is that when the fear, one of the things that I experienced this week in this experiment is that when the fear came in, after I was holding space for those, it's like it dried out the water. It dried out my sadness. And I, I only had this. And it became like, a, like an angry and scared. Like an angry and scared. So I was like hard and sharp. So I didn't have a space in my being. I wasn't holding space in my being for this softness. Uh, so that was, uh, that was something very amazing that I was able to experience this week and that I shared, shared with my partner. And in, in this experiment, I've been seeing the, the, the growing of this um, capacity to hold space for those, for those feelings. How is it going? The awesome thing about holding space for your feelings too, is that you learn how to hold space for other people's feelings too. If somebody feels scared, you're not freaking out about it. You're not like, you're not emotionally reactive to their fear. Uh, you're simply there. You're saying like, they feel scared. Yeah, I know that feeling. I know, I know, I know that feeling. If somebody's feeling angry and they're, they're, they're raging and they're like, Fuck. And then because you have experienced that level of anger, then you can hold space for them. You can actually be there with them without going into your own reactivity, without like feeling scared about their anger or emotionally scared about their anger, without feeling like you have to put yourself down about it. But you can meet there with their anger. You say, yes, you feel angry. Yes, you're, you're angry because I did this and that. And you can be there with them. And this is the basis of holding space. There was something else that was coming up. Yes, this is, this is, and, uh, and the, oh yeah. So another thing that we get taught in, in modern culture, in the mainstream culture where we're taught your feelings are too much, you're too much, you, you have to tone it down, you have to uh, repress your feelings, otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. Another thing that, the, that we're taught is that our feelings are, are good or bad, or they are positive or negative. This is a big one. They're positive or negative. Oh, I have negative feelings. Oh, I have positive feelings. And that is one of the biggest uh, teachings from mainstream culture that moving on to this new map that I'm showing you, that I want to show you, is, is uh, like an old way of thinking about it. It's an, like a really old way of seeing your feelings and being in your feelings. And it is really disempowering. It alienates you from your feelings, from your experience. And essentially, it wants to throw you off from. It's an it's an an experience. It's a thought where a programming that is disempowering essentially, because inside of each one of us, there is these four feelings. We have joy, anger, sadness, and fear. We have all all of these there inside of us. So, if you are. Uh, if you have a, a, a toxic relationship or if you have an unbalanced relationship with one of these, then you're going to essentially be cutting yourself off from those resources. And one of the amazing discoveries that I found in, in what I've been researching and in this work and in what I want to share with you is that you can feel and experience 100% intensity of any of these ones and you will be okay. That you can experience 100% anger and that you are okay. 
you you get to experience it. It's not by me telling you about it. It's not by me uh, convincing you about it. You actually get to go from 0%, 0% anger, for example, to 5%, then to 10%, then to 15%, then to 20%. Then you keep going up and up and up through the percentage with a rage towel. You get something like that. With your rage towel, you keep amping up your anger, sourcing, being at the source of your anger for a definite amount of time where you are choosing to increase that level of energy. And this is an amazing experience. After you go 50%, 60%, 80%, 90%, which it takes practice even to go there i didn't have access to that until uh, i i don't even know if i have access to it now but uh yeah I, mo like i was able only to feel 30 40 percent anger at maximum and now that capacity has been increasing to to actually be there uh, at 40 percent even even if you're able to source 40 percent of anger this is huge a huge resource for your life and and the the yeah the the, the new idea is that you can feel a hundred percent anger and you will be okay so you can like get to ride that huge intensity of anger and that you'll be okay and this is uh, an experiential thing it's not something that you can tell somebody else but you can feel this and when you're in a team you can feel the rage and be there and and after after the timer is done after the experiment is done you come down and you you ask them are you okay say yes that felt fucking great that felt amazing and yeah people i keep hearing that uh, from from people like that felt amazing that they were able to express that to with their voice, with their full being, with people uh, being there in their team about it, cheering them up, even like, go, 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 being there. And and this is a really unique space that I haven't seen anything like this. And this is what I want to, to bring to, to others in this work. So feelings on the old map, they're positive and negative. In the new map that I'm introducing, feelings are absolutely neutral. They are absolutely neutral and they carry information. They carry two things. They carry information and energy. And with these two things, you can use them for navigating the, your life, for navigating the present moment. And <clears throat> there is uh, many other distinctions that will help you to navigate the different resources in, in your body. And, and it takes these spaces of being in a team uh, of a specific space where you're uh, precisely practicing these things. There's different experiments that, that we get to practice in this. And we go little by little in teams, in groups of teams, small teams that get to practice in a more intimate space. And then we come back in the, the main group and share what was the goal of what was experienced. So <clears throat> this is a journey that I feel honored to, to be a part of and to invite others into. There is some very real things that I'm facing right now in this journey about my authenticity and about really what is my purpose and my calling. Am I lying to myself? I'm at that place where I, I'm wondering if I'm lying to myself, if I have been lying to myself this whole time and, and all I know right now at this point is how to be a crook or how to be a, a, a showman. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in this point of exploring these, these core parts of my life, which are uh, extremely painful and scary, uh, very, very uh, scared of, my own essence and and it, the 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 joy of being in, in this is that it's so real it is so real because i'm not pretending for somebody i'm at my edge of where i'm at in my research and and that i can share that uh that research with others or that i can share that with my team that i can open that up uh as, as it evolves in a way like that i can 
go and explore in these territories with others and bring others to this territory so that I so that I can so that we together create a, a more clear map of what is going on. Some of the things that I'm exploring and, and experimenting with, some of the territories, they, they, they are not only pertinent to me, they are a, a, a shared experience that it might not be for everybody. And, and it is for some people that are, are meant to go in this journey with me and to, to expand the, the territory of where we are so that uh, we can all, so that I can continue getting better at holding space for, for these things so that man and myself, so that I myself ha have a, another possibility of, of being more authentic or, or really taking a stand for what I came here to create without having to go uh, like back and forward, back and forward, in and out, in and out, but that I can step more thoroughly into what I came here to do. And, and this is what I'm hoping to bring for others too, that others, other men uh, can step there into their journey for other women and for, and for what they came here to create. So any questions so far? Are you with me? And if you are into all of this, in, if you are uh, interested in this exploration and you want to be part of these spaces and you want to share your research, this is a radically responsible context where you actually, you're not, I'm, you're not working with a superior authority. You are working with a, a, an equal. Uh, that is, um, and you get to bring in your own research. You get to, to share like, this is what's not working or this is what is working. This is what I want. This is, this is I don't want this. Uh, this is uh, the research that I'm in. This is my, be the, the question that I'm in. And you get to bring in that to the space. So, this is an invitation to become a researcher, to become an experimenter and come into these spaces and get in contact with me and let's work together. Let's, uh, on, let's unfold these territories and go and navigating together into new territories of communication of your, your principles, really an exploration of your principles. What are you taking a stand for? What are your bright principles? What are, what, do you come here to create what, what is happening in your underworld? What is happening in your underworld? What is happening that you are sabotaging yourself all the time? What is happening that you are saying that you're gonna do something and then you don't do it? There is just so, uh, so many territories that they are up for exploration in a team. And to, to come out of that shell where it's a secret, where you're staying inside and pretending that you don't care about it and that you can live uh, like this for the rest of your life into a space where you open up and come out uh, to try, to, to give it a go, to say, I care about this, I, I wanna explore this. And, and I know that I'm gonna make mistakes. I know I, I'm gonna look like a fool. I know that I'm gonna fuck up and, I know I'm gonna be laughed at. People are gonna laugh at me and they're gonna ridicule me. Uh, all of this, considering all of this and still choosing to, to come out of that thing into the real world, out from the, the fantasy world where, where you are living, which is uh, this un, unchecked re reality uh, facts into getting feedback, direct feedback from the universe, not from this idea or thought, but actually from doing it, where you're stepping out there and doing it like I did today and messing up, creating, making a mistake and still being in that space, asking what didn't work, what is not working. And write that down in, in your book of like, what is not working and stay in the pain of that uh, of that question. It's an alive question 
and allow it to what is not working allow it to to pour out because there's going to be from different from all the different emotions from your sadness from your joy your anger and your fear sadness your joy your anger and your fear yes and allow it to 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 come into the into the space i'm preparing a a space that is uh, of 12 weeks let, let me say that in a different way. Um, I did a, a, an initiation two years ago, about a, a year or two ago, that is called, uh, where it was a simple, very simple, quick, loud, and powerful practice that was a three minute practice of expressing at the maximum capacity my anger. In a, in a mattress, in a bed, with a towel, uh, biting a towel. And for those three minutes, I'll go from the beginning to the end with full-on uh, anger, full-on anger with your body, with your fists, your hands, your shoulders, your, your legs, everything, and, and your voice. Your voice is part of it. So your voice, your full-on voice for three minutes, you start the timer, for those three minutes, you go all completely crazy you let yourself go nuts and without hurting yourself without hurting others or the space and without getting arrested those are the three rules so for these three minutes you get to do that after you do it for one minute you start noticing something is different something is changing you start feeling something very real on on bottling it really feels like this unbottling experience where you uh, where there was something that was clogged, perhaps like a tube that was clogged with something and this anger is pushing to the clog and unclogging the tubes of your emotional body. So I got, I, I got to do this uh, a year. I think I finished it. Uh, it's been a, a year. I'm a little bit more than a year right now. So you do this three minute practice, which is like quick, effective, it's powerful and it's really loud. So you get to have a towel to... To, to muffle the sounds uh, so that you can do it uh, wherever you are. I have done it in parking lots. I have done it uh, in parks, in nature. I've done it at uh, the neighbor, uh, yeah, like in houses where I've stayed, in the bathroom, in my room. And yeah, the, the idea is that you bring yourself to high intensity anger, the highest intensity anger that you can source. Do you source for three minutes, you start, and then you end. And then when you end, you come to zero. You don't have to feel angry to do this. You don't have to, uh, to have any ideas or thoughts about this or feel angry previously. They are even the best time to do it is when you don't feel angry. When you feel joy and everything is fine, then you do this. You source, you source your anger for three minutes and then you come down. Then after one minute you, of the practice, you write down your experience of, of how it went so this is one quick practice of three minutes i did that three times a week for three months so this is the three 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 initiation you the three minute practice three times a week let's say monday wednesday and friday and you do that for three months so 12 weeks this is a total of 12 weeks doing a three minute rage practice three times a week get it this is the, the basic initiation process of getting your emotional body to restart its growth process. There is really nothing that, that will shake the, the process like that. There is very few things that will shake your emotional body like that. And this is one of the ways that you can choose to commit to, to this initiation, to restart the, the process of growing your emotional body and growing your capacity to hold space for for your own feelings and for other people's feelings and hold space for, for more possibility. So I'm, I'm holding space, I'm creating this space of 12 weeks and a program with step-by-step -step guides of like this, this basic practice is the, this practice that I told you about the three minutes is the, the core, is in a way the core of it, but there is other parts of it that are uh, for creating uh, distinctions, for creating uh, uh, different 
your inner structure, essentially for creating the inner structure, for creating distinctions that allow you to hold space for, for more things. And this part of the practice of three minutes is just that part of the emotional body that increases your capacity to feel your anger, to source your anger so that you can source clarity, so that you can source uh, your, your what you want. And, and by sourcing clarity, you get to know what you want, what you really want, what you don't want, what you want to say yes to and no to when somebody's crossing your boundary or something is crossing your boundary, even yourself, when you're crossing your own boundary, you feel the, the anger and then you're able to, to source it instead of repress it and push it away and numb it out by eating or smoking or, or, or even like uh, working out. You can source this anger and say, I'm crossing my own boundary. Why am I doing this? And, and by, by learning to expand on your, on your anger, your other emotions, they start coming alive too. Your fear, your sadness, and your joy. More of this a lot. A lot of the time, after these three minutes of, of anger, if you can get through the three minutes, the, the other emotions start coming up. So you see it's very common. I've seen it often that you start the, the anger practice and after one minute, it's like tears. A start, person starts crying because there was something, it's like this uh, feeling of unbottling. So when you get that unbottling feeling, that there is the other feelings that that come up, and it could be sadness. For me, I experience joy, so I would like start screaming, and after one minute, it would just be hilarious, or it will be uh, really, really a lot of joy of being able to hear myself uh, expressing those sounds or hear myself doing this radically crazy practice, and. And a lot of the time, it could be also fear that the fear comes up that oh, I'm going to I'm gonna get arrested or somebody's going to call because they're hearing somebody screaming. Uh, or, yeah, like there's all of these different fears that, that will come up with the practice. So it's a really amazing practice to to start that, that navigation, to push the, the boat forward, to 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 stop waiting that something in your life is going to come and, and do that thing for you and you taking the responsibility for doing that thing yourself. This is one of those things. It matures your voice. Your voice starts changing. You might lose your voice. And anyways, there is a lot of things that could happen with this. And I'm holding space for, for I'm creating a program of 12 weeks where man can come into and do this process in a team. So for three months, we'll be doing this together. You have your guides step-by-step step of different distinctions, different experiments that you will be doing to increase your capacity of holding space and reclaiming your authority, reclaiming your voice, reclaiming your center, and, uh, and reclaiming your attention. How are you using your attention? So this is uh, all of this has been like, I, uh, I'm calling it free and natural adult men or become a free and natural adult man. So this is a 12 week program, three months, doing the 333 initiation practice alongside with all of these step-by-step -step practices, alongside with community support. So you have a team that you can reflect to, connect with and talk with. And, and after those three months, there is another three months of easing out where you get to reintegrate back into or reintegrate forward into what is the new possibility for you. So if you have any questions about this, I would love to talk to you about this. Send me a message and I'm excited to hold this space. Um, there will be other spaces that are smaller and where you get to, uh, in a way, like build this up uh, more in a more gradual way without having to go into the big commitment of the three months. But if you are ready for this, if you want this and you're ready to jump into that container, I am here and I, I will hold the space for that. I, I am that and I, and yes, you'll go through this space of falling into this experience of going into your initiation practice and it's exhilarating and exciting. And I'm excited for all the possibilities that this will open up for man and in terms of the emotional intelligence and how they can navigate to hold space for, the culture and the world that they want to live in.
this is not the end. And this meeting is coming to an end. And there is still so much to explore, so much to navigate and discover. There is really a whole territory to explore out there. And, and this is an invitation to, to become a researcher, an explorer, an experimenter, and to bring your research to this space with a team and expand it and use it, share it. This is the kind of goal that grows as you share it. The more you share it, the goal grows. These possibilities that are being created here, they grow and it lands in somebody and then that territory is, uh, is possible to expand and keep the, the I encourage you to, if the, to become a researcher and an experimenter and to share your goal with others because it's really valuable for, for the, the, the evolution of, of man and the evolution of what is possible in planet Earth. So thank you for watching. You know where to contact me. And until the next time, this is Jorge Pedret. And thank you for being here with me and for joining in this space. And bye for now. <laughs>